Hi everyone, Paul here with PTZ Optics. And in this video, I wanna talk about understanding bandwidth for remote production as part of our Hive Studio training series. Let's jump into it. Now in your Hive dashboard, there is a few areas where you can monitor your bandwidth. And I wanna start there. If we look at the monitoring tab here, we can see all of the sources that are coming into your Hive production. We can see the resolution, the bit rate, and the frames per second. The nice thing about this is that it allows you to quickly look at the upload and download speeds required, and Hive will actually give you notifications, if we look at this behind here, notifications about what's going on. If you have low bandwidth, which I had a little bit ago when I was doing some a significant number of 4K video sources, it will let you know what's going on. So I wanted to start there to give you an idea of video bandwidth. And we're gonna talk high level and then we're gonna dig into the software so you can see all the different options. So let's understand bandwidth for remote production. Now there's a local area network which does have bandwidth. Your networking equipment has you know, a bandwidth limitation generally, whether it be a gigabit network, meaning you have a thousand megabits per second to work with, or a 10 gigabit network, meaning you have 10,000 gigabits of networking to work with. But essentially what's happening here is we have three PTZ or two PTZ cameras and a box camera connected to a Hive Studio computer on a local area network. Now these PTZ cameras, let's say they're NDI cameras. Well, each NDI camera has a bit rate which it sends over your network to the computer. And we'll look at a high level look at a network so that you can understand kind of how this all works. But generally a network has a router which connects us to the internet. There may or may not be a firewall, whether it's built into the router or separate. You have a network switch where you connect all of your sources, whether those be cameras or computers or printers. And then you might even have wireless access points. All of this works together to create a local area network. Now on your local area network, you may be using some of the bandwidth available for video. So you might have vMix running, maybe that has 100 megabits per second of NDI running to it from a video source, maybe a screen capture, maybe you have another NDI source, maybe it's a um, camera, maybe it's an encoder, but each source that you have on your local area network will use bandwidth. And we're not even talking about upload and download speeds here with the internet service provider. We're just talking about bandwidth on your local area network. And most people today still have a gigabit network switch, meaning a thousand megabits to play with. And if we're talking about NDI, full NDI high bit rate, high bandwidth sources are between 100 and 200 megabits per second. And then NDI HX or NDI high efficiency cameras are generally between six and 22 megabits per second. Now they can kind of go up to about 50 megabits per second, even a little higher, but these are the types of things you should be thinking about. How many sources do you have connected to your local area network? How many sources are being connected to your computer? What type of ethernet cabling are you using to connect? Hopefully it's cat five E or greater meaning it can handle a full gigabit of data, and making sure that your local area network is rock solid, right? You're not exceeding what your local area network can handle, and you have a good local area network setup. So here's another local area network setup. We've got one, two, three, four cameras. We have two computers. One of them is vMix, one of them is Hive, and they're working together. Hive is being used for the PTZ camera control, and vMix is being used for the switching and graphics and controls. So all of this is a local area network and all of this can be done on a gigabit network switch. Just thinking about how much bit rate, how much bandwidth does each video source use and can it fit on your networking infrastructure that you have. Now, as soon as we connect to a remote location using the cloud, now we're using upload and download speeds. We're using upload speeds to send camera video up to the cloud. And then there's download speeds at the remote location where we're downloading those video streams in low latency over the cloud. 
So here's a little bit of an example here. Let's say we have a local area network on our studio. This is very similar to what I have in my studio here. And we have a camera, uh, another camera, and another camera. Three cameras, each set at four megabits per second, or 4,000 kilobits. And that would give us a total of 12 megabits of upload. Uploading to the wide area network, the public internet, via our internet service provider's connection to the cloud. And then on the remote side, we are downloading those 12 megabits per second of data to the hive running in the remote location. So that's the difference between upload speeds and download speeds. Now you can run a speed test, and this is a great thing to do. We'll go to google.com and we'll run a speed test really quickly. Speed test. So will do it right in the browser for you. And we'll see that my download speed is almost 300. We've got a pretty good connection here. And then it will also give you the upload speed. And my upload speed is almost 200 because I didn't know it was so good. So I can send tons of cameras up to the cloud. I can download plenty back. I'm looking really good. I don't know how you guys are doing, but it's something that you'll need to think about as you're understanding the bandwidth requirements. Now, each camera can be set up with different bit rates. So the encoding profile on your cameras, and we'll take a look at this in this video, depending on what you're doing. If you're doing 4K video, you're going to need a higher bit rate. And these are some of the recommendations that we'll provide to you in our documentation and in the course material that we're providing. Uh, but in, for example, in 4K at 30 frames a second, you're looking at 30 megabits per second per camera. Not bad. If I've got four cameras, that's 120 megabits and I've got over 200. So that should I should be totally fine to do 4K. But you need to think about this and, and where you're at with your upload and download speeds. Now in Hive, we provide several tools for understanding all of this, whether it's wondering if there's an issue with your computer usage, your RAM usage, your storage space, or of course, the bitrate of the incoming and outgoing cameras. Now, luckily, we offer you the ability to edit all of this, these advanced settings directly in Hive. You can edit it in Hive, you can edit it on the camera itself, and I wanna show you how all of that works, um, because as you start to do more complex workflows, understanding your bitrate, your bitrate really, um, you know, it controls the quality of the incoming video. And so you might have different studios that you're connecting to over the cloud. And Hive gives you the ability to see the incoming video, the outgoing video, and manage it all remotely, which is, which is really a nice way to do it. So let's take a look at how we can manage all of this remotely, which is really nice if you're not on site. So if we pull up Hive here, uh, the first thing we can do in the left-hand side is we can hit the cog to open up the, let's put the cog here, the advanced settings. And I want to take a look at these advanced settings really quickly so that we can start to dig into these. Now we can see the video protocol that's coming in. It looks like we're bringing in video via NVI. We can look at the encoding stream, which is H.264. Now we can do H.265, for example. We can do uh, change the frame rate. We can change the bit rate. Now when you make a change to say the frame rate, you will likely need to, and it'll tell you here a little notification that you are very likely going to need to reboot the camera for the camera to restart with these encoding settings. So we give you a notification to say, hey, if you're going to make a change like this, you might want to reboot the camera so that the change sticks. Now, this camera's IP address is 192.168.67. So let's take a peek at this camera. And what we'll do is we'll go to admin, admin, which is the default password. And we'll go in and we'll look at the audio video settings in here. This is the camera that I have access to on my local area network, but you could remotely access this as well. Now we can see here that I have my encoding settings set up the way that they're being received inside of Hive. And I can apply those and of course reboot if I make any significant changes so that when the camera boots up, it starts streaming with the settings that you have enabled. 
Now that gives you a pretty good understanding of how all of this works. And it's important to note whether you are in local mode or in cloud mode. If you're in local mode and you're not worried about sending lots of video with upload speed, you can increase your bit rate. And I'll end by giving you a metaphor on bit rates that really helped me understand them. You can think about your, your canvas of video as a resolution. So you maybe you have 720, 1280 by 720, which is a small canvas. Maybe you have 4K, maybe you have 1920 by 1080. That's your canvas size. Your bit rate is the amount of paint that you put in that canvas. It's the amount of color depth. It's the amount of you know, data that is put inside of that canvas. So the higher your bit rate, the higher the video quality. So just think about that as you're setting up your resolution, frame rate, and bit rate. Um, to maximize your quality and what you're capable of. If you're on the local area network, you can use high bit rates, which is what NDI was generally designed for, to have high bit rate, local area network, compressed video. Or if you're doing remote production, you, you might be limited on your upload speeds and download speeds, so you might have to adjust the bit rate of each camera to get the optimal scenario. All right, well, that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next Hive tutorial.